Hey everyone, Martin here. Last week, graphic designer Jason Fowler joined us for a chat to provide simple tips for editing photos and answer some of your questions. For those unable to attend, I want to share this video with four of Jason's basic photo editing tips. During the chat, Jason used Adobe Lightroom, but what we discuss applies for most apps. Tip number one, take a good photograph. As a graphic designer, people all the time send you photographs that you need to use for different things. A lot of the photographs that you are sent are terrible. So, you know, you get blurry photographs, you get photographs that are way too small, uh, bad lighting, exposure, all that kind of stuff. So you have to do a lot of photo editing just to make them usable and professional looking. So you gotta, you know, do a lot of corrections for the lighting. You might have to crop it. You almost always have to crop it, fix the colors, all that sort of stuff. Some tips for taking a good photograph. To avoid blurry images, use a tripod or a stabilizer. Shoot a subject with the light source facing the subject. Tip number two, 90% of photo editing is using basic color correction tools. The first thing you want to do is to correct the photograph before you start doing anything crazy to it. So if you've got a program, a uh, photograph where say the exposure was bad, or if it's uh, hazy, or if, it, if there's just something technically wrong with it, that's the kind of stuff that we want to fix first. So the first thing we want to do is correct before we do anything, you know, nice with the color or anything like that. So. If you can see over here on the side, I'm in the light option and I've got all these options. We've got exposure first. So if your photograph is underexposed, you could boost it. If it's overexposed, you could drop it. So here we want to get the exposure level just right. This photograph is pretty decently exposed. We've got our contrast, which most people probably know. That's the difference between lights and darks if you turn the contrast all the way down you see how it looks washed out if you turn your contrast way up you see how uh, more objects become black and more objects become white okay so we're gonna just kind of find a nice spot highlights you see how just the light parts are boosted are taken down okay maybe we'll boost the highlight just a little bit shadows you see how the shadows are deepened or lightened with this slider okay so i want to find a appropriate level shadow i'm gonna brighten up the shadow a little bit for now now this is whites and blacks so what you're deciding with this is what's called your um, your white point. So you're deciding what value is gonna be white. You can adjust that. And what value is gonna be black. We can adjust that. This is what we're gonna start with here, okay? Tip number three. When making a photo more artistic, avoid extremes. First, let me recap some common artistic effects and what they mean. Saturation refers to the intensity or purity of a color. A color is saturated if it is closer to its pure color or unsaturated if it's less intense. Color temperature refers to how warm or cool a color is. So warm colors like red, yellow, orange will stand front and center. Cool colors tend to stay in the background like blue or violet. Tint or shade refers to how you desaturate a color. To desaturate a color, you can mix a lighter color to create a tint or a darker color to create a shade. As Jason explains, when you play with these tools, you alter the hues in the original photo. Now we're gonna look into the, these options here. Hopefully you can see these. These are temperature, tint, vibrance, and saturation. <clears throat> now these are kind of particular to uh, Lightroom perhaps, but you always have saturation. You can always adjust the temperature in different ways anyway. 
So what these do, you see in the photograph over here. Okay. You see how the slider is blue on this side and, and yellow on this side. We can adjust the temperature of the entire image. If we wanted a little more yellow, we can go this way. If we wanted a little more blue, we can go this way. Tip number four, use contrast to make an image more dramatic. This is a really basic uh, adjustment that is called uh, curves. Okay, so you see this, it's what's called a histogram. And you see this line here that you can move around. And what you can do is you can create a custom curve. And this is a powerful tool that can be really weird if you're not really used to it. But the simplest thing, the simplest way to use it, you see how if I move it down here, I can either make it dark or light. And if I move it up here, it's dark or light, but I'm, a, I'm, uh, I'm affecting different frequencies in the photograph. What we want to do, what you almost want to, always want to do is, is create what's called an S curve. So it's just a very slight S and we're adding contrast. Contrast is very important to a good photograph. Most of the time you want a lot of contrast so that your image sort of pops, as people like to say. So I'm going to make, and it doesn't take much, but I'm going to make the darks just a little more dark and the brights just a little bit brighter. And you can kind of see the difference. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook.